air defense today has the means to cover all avenues of approach for hostile targets coming in high, low, or at ground level. This film is an introduction to some of the means our Army air defense artillery has to provide protection from all air threats. targets coming in high and fast, the Nike Hercules guided missile air defense system can detect, identify, track, and intercept single or formations of aircraft and destroy them. Nike Hercules systems are designed to defend critical military installations. to protect widespread industrial centers. And to provide extensive coverage for great metropolitan complexes. The basic firing unit of a Nike Hercules system is the missile battery, which can be deployed to cover these areas night and day, regardless of weather. The equipment of a Nike Hercules battery is emplaced in two distinct areas. There is a battery control area. In it are located tracking and control equipment, which guide a missile so as to intercept a target and destroy it. Separated by one to three miles is the launching area. In this area are located facilities and equipment to assemble, store, check out and launch the missiles. The launching area may have two to four launching sections. When a missile is received, it is taken first to the assembly and service area to be assembled and tested. Each individual part of a missile is checked. The completed missile is then delivered to the launching section. When the Nike Hercules system is installed in a permanent site, the assembled missiles are stored underground in the launcher sections until required for tactical use. During storage, tests are conducted constantly to ensure that missiles and associated equipment are operational. In case of imminent attack, the battery personnel go to their battle stations. The launcher sections are controlled from the launching control station by the launching control officer. Missiles are brought above ground singly. Then are rolled to their respective launcher while the elevator returns underground for the second missile. As the missiles are locked on their launchers, safety checks are made immediately. Simultaneously in the fire control area, pre-fire checks are performed. The fourth missile is brought above ground.
Crewmen start their safety checks while the crew chief ensures the readiness of his section. When the crew chief is satisfied that all checks have been made, he uses the intercom system to report launcher ready to the panel operator in the underground personnel room. The missile is elevated on its launcher by the operator. All safety checkpoints are indicated by the red safety flags. When the check has been made, the crewman removes the flag but keeps it in his possession. This flag and all others must be accounted for before firing. When all missiles are ready, personnel clear the area. They return to the shelter of the underground personnel room. Here, the crew chief makes a check of crew and safety flags. Should personnel or safety flags be missing, all operations in this area cease until they are accounted for. When the section is ready, when every safety precaution has been fulfilled, the crew chief uses special crew safety keys to complete all pre-fire preparations. He then designates which missile will be fired. This ready-to-fire information is sent to the launching control station where the launching control officer selects the section from which the missile will be fired and relays the information to the battery control area. In the director's station trailer, the battery control officer has assumed battle stations and is prepared to conduct the engagement. Displays keep him informed of what is happening in his battery and its defended area. Acquisition radars detect targets in azimuth and range. The high power acquisition radar, called HIPAR, is specially designed to detect small targets at great ranges. In place of high par, some batteries are equipped with an alternate battery acquisition radar called ABAR. When using ABAR, an additional console is used to assist the battery control officer in selecting appropriate video. The low power acquisition radar will complement the high par or ABAR. Targets are detected and identified as friend or foe. Target position is sent from the acquisition radar to the target tracking radars. These lock on a target and continue tracking it. The missile tracking radar slews to the designated missile, locks on the missile to guide it when in flight. In the tracking station trailer, radar operators using information displayed on their radar scopes track both the target and the missile in azimuth, elevation, and range. The hostile target, however, has equipment aboard by which an attempt will be made to jam our radars. All our radar operators are intensively trained to expect and to defeat such electronic countermeasures. They have ample equipment to overcome presently known measures. This applies equally to all guided missile systems in our Army Air Defense Artillery. The computer calculates a kill point where the missile will meet the target and destroy it. Target and missile information is displayed electronically to the battery control officer in the director station. At the optimum time, he will operate the fire switch. <laughs> 